No. <laughs> well, you, you know, if, 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 you, if you didn't want an answer, you shouldn't have asked. <laughs> but is your, is your idea that we will going to talk about it? coming. Uh, today, um, John Quo is going to end his graduate career um, with the defense of his dissertation. Um, I, I um, although John's been in the lab several years, I uh, never really realized that, that um, he had gone to Columbia. I thought that, you know, I knew that you had gone to school back east someplace, but I never realized that the, you were at Columbia, and I never realized that you had a degree in math. So now I'm going to hold you to a wholly different stage. <laughs> um, so there was only, there's only one blemish on John's uh, career, which has been stellar uh, to this point, and that is, is that he went to medical school across town. <laughs> but after Columbia um, and medical school at SC, he came here and has uh, completed uh, residencies and fellowships in And I think um, the, the uh, dissertation speaks for itself. Uh, he's been extremely productive in my lab. Uh, he's been co-author on seven uh, papers. There were four papers before he, he came in uh, to the lab, and there were also two uh, book chapters. So John has been uh, very uh, prolific in, in expanding the literature. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that John uh, is a recipient of Scholar of Reproductive Science, Scientist Development Award, which is a joint program with uh, Bayer and uh, NICHD. Uh, this is a five-year program that uh, will allow John to build his own, his own laboratory search, his own uh, program. Uh, it's a very prestigious award, and uh, I was very pleased when John uh, got that. So uh, without further ado, John, uh, the podium is all yours. Um, if you have any questions, I think it'll, uh, it's up to John whether he wants to accept them during the, the talk or, or afterwards, but, but then when, when it's done with the formal presentation and we're done with questions, uh, I'll ask the audience to leave and the committee will stay and we'll have a little discussion with him uh, about the finer points of his dissertation. John? Well, thank you for uh, coming to my talk today. Um, if you have questions, I think it's probably okay to ask <laughs> okay, so my talk is on membrane estrogen receptor alpha interacts with metabotropic glutamate receptor 1A to stimulate intracellular calcium release and progesterone synthesis in female hypothalamic astrocytes. I don't know if you turn on Dan, do you mind? Maybe a little easier to see. Oh, too much. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, the main outline of this talk. In this talk, I'm going to discuss the importance of hypothalamic progesterone in female um, reproduction and ovulation. I'm also going to talk about neuroprogesterone production. So this is progesterone synthesized within the brain itself by hypothalamic astrocytes. I'm also going to discuss uh, several different membrane-associated estrogen receptors and their rapid signaling pathway. Then I'm going to talk about that these several membrane-associated estrogen receptors will interact with metabotropic glutamate receptors. And finally, I'm going to discuss sex differences in hypothalamic astrocytes. The hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis is critical in female reproduction, which is uh, important for the estrous cycle in rats, which is analogous to the menstrual cycle in humans. In the hypothalamic pituitary axis, GnRH neurons will secrete GnRH into the hypophysial portal system, which stimulates pituitary gonadotropes to release FSH and LH, which then stimulate the oocytes in the ovary to grow and mature. 
and as the oocytes mature, they will secrete estradiol into the circulation. And then the estradiol feeds back on hypothalamus and pituitary, and that's normally a <coughs> negative feedback, which will decrease the GnRH and then FSH and LH stimulation of the ovaries. So as the ovaries um, and the follicles mature, the estrogen levels will increase. And when it gets towards its peak, and, and the follicles are ready to ovulate, this negative estrogen feedback now becomes a positive estrogen feedback. It stimulates the GnRH neurons, which releases a surge of GnRH, which then cement the pituitary to release the surge of FSH and mainly LH to trigger ovulation. And so we see that there's a large surge in this triggers ovulation, and then in the rat it turns um, into the estrous phase. <clears throat> so not only do you need a very high level of estrogen in order to ovulate, you actually need progesterone also. And circulating estradiol induces the synthesis of progesterone receptors in the right hypothalamus. And in addition, a pre-ovulatory rise in progesterone, as well as progesterone receptor activation are both obligatory events for the GnRH and LH surges in rats. So in an experiment by Chapel and Levine in 2000, <coughs> they took female rats, they removed the ovaries, and then even though the ovaries are removed, if you give them a subcutaneous injection of estradiol, <laughs> the brain will still have an LH surge that you can detect peripherally in the bloodstream. In another experiment, they take the same rats, and now before injecting estradiol, they gave a subcutaneous injection of progesterone receptor antagonists. So this blocks the progesterone receptor. Then they receive the same injection of estradiol, but there's no longer an LH surge. So this tells us that progesterone receptors need to be activated in order for the LH surge to occur. And then in the third experiment, very similar, they took the same rats, and then in the third ventricle of the brain, they injected uh, progesterone receptor antisense oligodeoxynucleotides, which blocks the translation of progesterone receptor. And again, after the estradiol, there's no LA surge. So this tells us that you need synthesis of a progesterone receptor. So you need synthesis and activation of progesterone receptor. So you really need progesterone around, in addition to the estrogen. So we wanted to be sure that this was um, a progesterone that's produced in the brain and not peripherally that goes and, and gets you know, taken up from the circulation. So there were studies back in, in, all the way back to 1974 where they measured peripheral levels of progesterone prior to the LA surge in rodents, and they did not see an increase in the per peripheral progesterone. Then in our laboratory in 2003, they took female rats and they removed the ovary and the adrenal gland. And these are the two peripheral organs that can um, generate Genesis and, and produce progesterone. So these were both removed, and if you give these rats injections of estradiol, you will also get an LH surge. And then prior to the LH surge, at about 52 hours uh, for the LH surge, but prior to that, we actually dissected different parts of the brain, the hypothalamus, the cerebellum, parietal cortex, and medulla, and we see that in females, that with the, with the estradiol, which is in black, there's actually an increased amount of progesterone within the brain itself even though the peripheral organs for progesterone are gone. And that's much higher than controls. And, and we do not see that in, in the males. So there's some sex difference, and the progesterone, we believe, is synthesized centrally. So what is the source of the hypothalamic progesterone? A study by Zoyan and Yen in 1999 isolated the main cell types of the central nervous system. Neurons, which in this schematic here, are one of the major cells of the brain. They're responsible for things such as memory, sensory function, motor function, um, and these were isolated. And then they also isolated oligodendrocytes, which are supportive cells, and the main function of oligodendrocytes is to make the myelin sheath around the axon of the neuron to promote action potential, reliability, and the speed of action potentials. And then you have astrocytes, which are thought initially to be supportive 